Dreams begin on two wheels. Hopefully they don't end there. What's up dudes, in today's video we're gonna be reviewing the Mach Wheel Asphalt commuter style electric bike. It's got a torque sensor and a pretty average 500 watt motor and also a pretty average 14.7 amp hour battery pack. They say we can get about 60 miles of range, which maybe we could do with the torque sensor. Typical list price for this bike is about 1800 bucks. It is on sale right now. Check the current price in the link below. But before you do that, let's unbox this bike, take a closer look at all the parts. Then we'll take the asphalt out on the asphalt to the beach and do the towel hippie circuit and see if this bike is any good or not. Chasing dreams with a little boost. That's a pretty satisfying box to open. This one has street friendly tread pattern on a pretty reasonable 27.5 by 2.4 inch tire by Chow Yang with the hippo skin. Brake rotors are Tektra 180 millimeter drilled and slotted. Get this dream started on one wheel. The spike's actually not too heavy. So I'll uh, lift it out of the box. Yeah. This is the high step in orange paint, but they do have the step through as well as other colors. Link below the video in the description. Snatch the keys to the battery while we see them. And it is a frame integrated battery. Obviously you can charge it on the bike or off the bike. We'll pop it off to make it a little lighter. Whew, battery's feeling a little heavier than I was expecting. Color matched all around. Weight is a good thing for range. So on this battery, they have it listed as an unusual 47.97 volts. Come on now, can't we just round up to 48? 667 watt hours of energy and it's listed as a 13.9 amp hour battery pack. In case you didn't know, don't throw this away. I forget which charger they sent us on the basalt. Manual. So let's see what's in here. Nice. Feels nice. Yeah. Nice. They give us the three amp charger. So if this battery was completely empty, it'd take about four and a half hours to charge. Hopefully it's not completely empty. Oh my goodness. The bike just fell over, man. Well, looks like my wall's gonna be a little bit banged up now. Guess it'll match the uh, stripe on the floor there. Dang it. Oh gosh, it got the... No. Anyway, they give you a pump, pedals, tools, everything you need. Well, I guess while we're crashed here, it'd be a good time to look at the Tektro hydraulic brakes and the fork. What is this? The shine fork. Good thing it's packaged up pretty well. Asphalt. Ooh, what's that? Looks like it's got some lights integrated into the frame and it's a mock wheel branded motor. Give this another try. What's going on here? I've had better starts to builds. Oops, don't fall again. Tighten that down. So check it out. I don't tell you how to build bikes, but this is important. In my last mock wheel review, I had an issue. It was my own fault. So this zoom thing, it's adjustable. You can adjust the height of the handlebars, which is awesome, but there's a little hidden bolt down here and you have to tighten that to keep this thing from moving. Mine was by default just kind of tight already, but you gotta really tighten that down. Here's the headlight. And before I forget to tell you, there's a horn down on the bottom of there. So you get your pedal assist phones, power button, all that stuff. Round faux leather grips. Not a lot of thickness to them, honestly. Thumb throttle is on the left. Personally, it doesn't bother me, but some people like to be able to use their left hand to signal. I'll check out the display in a moment. Seven gears on the Shimano shifter and Tektro hydraulic brakes to match the rest of the Tektro braking components. The seat is wide. Seems like it'll be comfy. It's got a quick release lever so we can easily adjust it. That's how long the stem is or whatever you call it. Time to throw the wheel on. It comes with these uh, pretty spring-loaded plastic fenders. There is not a quick release on the front axle, making it more difficult for the bad guys to seal your wheel, but less convenient for you to pop it off if you need to. All right, dudes, I messed up big time. This is why you should not use power tools. That was way too high of a torque setting. I totally just stripped this bolt out here. So like this thing is like never gonna tighten down. Um, I might just have to do this review without this fender on here and the light. I don't know how I'm gonna solve this problem. Actually, I have good news. For those of you who are really concerned about having your uh, these things perfectly straight, this is a nice setup on this because these are like adjustable. It's gonna, it's gonna help us today. Yeah, dude, that bolt is done. All right, I think I somehow figured that out. Now let's set the tire PSI to 160. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. It's 20 PSI is the recommended. Seems a little low though. Yeah, actually, if you, you can barely read the print on the tire, but it says 30 to 50 PSI. We'll do 45. So the front suspension has adjustments on the right fork. 
with clicks. And there's a rear rack. And I might need to remove this uh, for the review. It's like touching the tire. I don't, I don't know how to fix it, man. And we get the typical seven gears on the Shimano cassette, basic tourney derailleur, and we're gonna have to check out these lights. Let's put the battery on. It's charged up to four out of five bars. Let's check the voltage, 53.7. 54.6 is full on a 48 volt battery. That's a conservative four bar readout. Dude, I'm honestly surprised by the weight of this battery. I'm gonna weigh it. For a 14 amp hour, 667 watt hour. Let's throw it on the scale. 10 pounds, 1.5 ounces. I feel like they're somehow a little conservative on this battery size. Just throw it on there. Let's, let's set it on there. Nicely. Powered up. Oh, there must have been a switch somewhere I missed. Oh no, hello. Nice. Hi. Beautiful display. We've seen this on the Mockwell Basalt. This is the asphalt. Color display shows you your battery here on the side. This would be if there's a second battery added, I believe is what they told me. So your options are, oh, there there are no options. Just everything is up here for you. And then you can just tap through your pedal assist modes from zero on up to five. And don't forget about that horn hidden down here. Oh yeah. Oh, and lights, we gotta do the lights. So tab that to turn on the lights. Headlight, yeah, yeah. Pretty basic. There you have it. But the cool part is these uh, lights integrated into the rear frame. Are they brake lights? Oh yeah, you bet you they are. They just light up pretty bright. We need to pull the brake lever. Let's check out what we're working with on that Mach Wheel 500 watt nominal motor. Pedal assist five. Ready, go. And just real quick here to give you an idea, this is what this bike looks like on max saddle height for a six foot five dude. Here's my leg extension. I have an inseam of 34. And drop that seat down to mid height, way down, yeah. I don't know if this helps you at all, but inseam 34, six foot five dude. Here's where the seat is in relation to the handlebars. Back on max. Should make for a pretty comfy ride. For me, being that the seat comes up to about the handlebars. Most importantly, not over the handlebars, but also these handlebars sweep back. Sweep back just a little bit there. For this style bike, kind of wish it had ergonomic hand grips. You could always swap those out. All right, dudes, let's take the mock wheel asphalt out for a ride. Before we get on this thing, I want to point out they do make this bike in step through. Basically the same exact thing, just a step through frame. And you can choose from two different sizes on the step through variation. But let's swing a leg over the step over version. Also, you might notice I'm missing the fender. I had some technical difficulties. Stripped the screw, ended up messing it up. Your bike will come with the front fender. It'll be fine. Power this display up and make our way through the apartment bike shop here. Per usual, we'll track our distance on Strava. So the 500 watt nominal output motor on the asphalt probably isn't really meant to do a hill like this from a stop, but that's what we do in all my reviews. So for a dude that weighs 200 pounds on pedal assist five, thumb throttle only, let's see what kind of torque this bike can do. They claim 65 Newton meters of torque, showing us our power output here. And it's actually doing surprisingly well for not pedaling at all throttle only. So I kind of lost my balance there. Let's get a bit of a rollout. Now normally a hill this steep, you'd probably roll in with a bit of a rollout. So let's do that. Six miles an hour, throttle only again. No ramp up for it. I should have gave it a bit more of a ramp up, but it's going still, it's going. All right, it's done So, Oh, obviously though, you'd probably be pedaling, you know, if you're doing something like this. So just a very minimal effort on this. The torque sensor giving me 65 newton meters of torque, no problem. Welcome to another beautiful Saturday here in Southern California, guys. We're gonna get out here for a little Saturday afternoon ride and see what the mock wheel asphalt is made of. Maybe the first thing we should do is get this thing on some actual asphalt. So this might be a little bit less powerful than like a four inch wide fat tire e-bike, but compared to a lot of the 500 watt e-bikes I review, this one actually feels Pretty strong off the line, fairly torquey. A lot of 500 watt motors I review are not able to climb that 20% grade under throttle only, which technically I guess this did not do from a stop, but with a bit of a rollout and just pedaling, just or pedaling just like a slight amount, it was no problem at all. My goodness, what a freaking beautiful afternoon. Brilliant blue skies, 
green and the trees. It is the peak of summer here in SoCal right now. So if you're looking for a commuter bike, my first impression on this is it seems like it's gonna be a pretty good option. Uh, let's go ahead and try out the gears. Gear number one, it is a torque sensor, which in my opinion, if you want something you're gonna get exercise on, torque sensor is the way you're gonna wanna go. If you want something that you're gonna ghost pedal on, cadence sensor is the way to go. Torque sensors generally cost a little bit more, which is why we see this bike priced at 1600 bucks at the time I'm recording this video. It is on sale, a couple hundred bucks off right now. I do have that link below in the description box to see current pricing. So with the torque sensor, um, it'll basically just help you based on how hard you're pressing on the pedals. So on pedal assist one, we can get up to about 12 miles an hour. That's kind of where it's capping us out in terms of how much it's helping us. So in general, this uh, pedal assist one seems to be pretty good. You can actually get like a low amount of power by pedaling just a little bit, or you can pedal a little harder and get a nice little nudge up. Now let's cycle through the different pedal assist modes. I'm on three already. Seven speed Shimano shifter on the right. So on pedal assist three, I am noticing the sensitivity thing that I noticed on the Basalt ST that I reviewed. When you're giving it like a very low amount of power, it seems like um, it's either just not going to help you at all or it kind of starts helping you a decent amount. Now you can bump down the pedal assist to like one if you want to uh, reduce the amount of power you're getting there at the very low uh, input from yourself. But that's not what I want to do. Let's crank it up the pedal assist five, see what kind of speed we can get out of this thing. So it is a class two e-bike which wait what it's taking us faster than 20. i was totally expecting this to cap us out at 20 but it says we're going 28 already what the heck 29 all right that's what i like to see when i first got on this bike i was afraid i was going to be disappointed in today's ride thinking it only went 20 miles an hour and i couldn't figure out how to top it faster than 20. but again you probably know you're uh, watching reviews from a speed demon who owns two e-bikes that go faster than 50 miles an hour so torque sensor on this bike feels smooth even on like pedal assist five here i can just put like a little amount of pedal assistance in and it'll just help me a little bit i feel like since this motor and controller is a little bit less strong than the basalt you don't really uh notice like the twitchiness of the torque sensor when you're just barely touching the pedals with like less than five pounds of force i'd have to say first impression on this torque sensor it feels nicer than the basalt likely due to you know just less power in general on this bike, but it, it doesn't feel like not powerful. Let's get out here and ride in traffic a bit, see how fast we can actually go on this thing. So riding position feels nice. I like the seat on this bike. It is cutting us off at about 30, I see on the dash there. Yeah, you're not gonna go faster than 30 on like any 48 volt bike, which is what this one is, 48 volt, 15 amp hour. Man, we're cranking along 29 miles an hour here. I am pleasantly surprised. Still a little off-roading, not too much though. I tightened down that bolt on the front here. Make sure you tighten down that bolt. I showed it earlier in my review. On the basalt review I did, it was totally my mistake. I forgot to tighten that bolt down and I was doing some off-roading and the handlebars dropped on me. That should not be happening today. Time will tell. Feeling out this pedal assist sensor a little bit more, just giving it like a little tiny bit of effort. So this bike is, relatively nimble you know I, I forget the exact weight on this probably what 55 pounds i would guess roughly in that ballpark you can check the official website on that but it feels way more nimble than like a four inch wide fat tire bike like night and day difference and the swept back handlebars make for a nice upright riding position but i i can still get power down to the pedals and this torque sensor is happy to give me power which is not true on all e-bikes i review i have reviewed some e-bikes with torque sensors that were pretty stingy on how much power they give you this one has a big battery and pretty powerful how powerful well let's get on here do a zero to 20 test got the gps in the right hand and we'll do thumb throttle only let these slow bikes get ahead of us a little bit i weigh 200 pounds ready go so it's not like a thrilling launch it ramps on that power nicely with the throttle 15 16 17 19 20 and it cuts us off at 20 as a class 2 e-bike should so this thing accelerates respectably quick for a 500 watt electric bike more powerful than i was expecting it to feel honestly and since it does have that we'll call it 15 amp hour battery pack i think it's technically 14.7 some weird amount of amp hours uh you'll be able to use that power for quite a while without burning the battery out they say 60 miles um i could honestly see it but you know that'll really depend on 
how hard you're pushing the battery, how much work you're doing on your own. We'll see what kind of range I get today. I mean, I am on a pedal assist five right out the gate and this is a fun little commuter bike to ride. I don't, can you call it little? I mean, it's not big, it's not tiny. It's like a, a middleweight bike. I should point out, I can read the display through my polarized lenses. Again, that's not true for all bikes I review. The polarized lenses will filter the screen out, which is a little annoying. And the screen is bright, I can read it. It's a color display. And on pedal assist five, this thing just wants to cook, man. I mean, and for 1600 bucks if you're looking for a commuter bike I, I don't feel like this is a terrible option i do kind of wish that the hand grips were ergonomic on this style bike or had like a little bit more padding i always wear these grips these gloves anyway so it doesn't really matter too much to me it's not that i uh have something to complain about them i guess just reviewing a lot of bikes i would prefer the ergonomic style grips on this kind of bike dude these bikes up here might be a little more powerful but they're way less agile as you probably already know i have reviews on those kind of bikes on my channel too not to say that this is a weak bike because uh i'm, I'm guessing we'll be able to pass everybody oh he's probably put it on pedal assist five yeah buddy that's the benefit of class three right there it's like a diversion today look at the purple have you guys seen the Venice Canals? Last time we were over this way, we got in trouble. <laughs> kind of. It's a pretty cool little area to, well, I don't think you're supposed to ride over here is what somebody told me last time. Let's see if uh, we could do this. This is pretty uh, tight quarters here. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. It's a beautiful area. I swear there's always like algae in the water over here though. Yeehaw. So I do have the seat on max height right now. And at six foot five, I feel like I do fit this, this bike just fine. There's my pedal stroke. I feel comfortable on this. The reach is good for me. I think six four is the max recommended height for this bike. Uh, but you know, my seems 34 and I feel totally fine on it. Check it out. My rubber duck is here. I'm good, thanks man. Are you sure? Yeah. Wow, it is really pretty over here. Um, but right now I am enjoying the nimbleness of this bike. The, the four inch fat tire bikes I review a lot of times are, I feel, you know, I can ride them here, no question, but those extra wheels, they just, they're a little more lethargic. Drop it down to gear one, put it on pedal assist five. Oh yeah. It's like Christmas bulbs. See the nimbleness I'm talking about? Thank you. Oh yeah. Slow it down here. Brakes are confidence inspiring. Tectoro hydraulic, they feel smooth. Smooth as the paint on this car, man. Keep that fresh. So the upright riding position on this bike is pretty comfy. Look at the flamingo and that's some actual real ducks back there. So the step through would be a little bit easier to get on and off. High step, it's not bad, but Reviewing a lot of bikes, a lot of times I, I prefer to step through. If I wasn't hopping on and off a bike every five minutes, this one would probably be fine. As I mentioned, the step through does come in two sizes. All right, dudes, to the beach we go. All the bikes out here, man. Lamborghinis too. Actually, we match that Lambo. The thing that we do not match on is our ability to get through traffic. E-bikes are life, man. Around here, you just can't beat it, man. You really can. You get to turn your miserable commute into an enjoyable experience and burn a little bit of calories too. Now one downside to this bike is uh, tires aren't quite fat enough to ride out in the sand probably. I did want to mention the gearing on this bike feels good. I noticed like I was not ghost pedaling. I wasn't having any trouble keeping up with how fast I was pedaling it when I got up to 28 miles an hour. Sometimes when you're riding a bike, if you get to like 24, 25, you turn the pedals over, uh, you start to notice you can't keep up. So what is the lag like on the torque sensor? Not pedaling, pedaling power. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. So, I mean, it's a torque sensor. It kicks on pretty much immediately. Torque sensors, they're great if you want to exercise. Oh, we don't got fat tires, but we can do a little off-roading if we need to. We got the bike thief over here scoping out bikes. Guess he doesn't see anything. He's over there. Dude, he's totally just like scoping out bikes. I feel like there's literally nothing that you can do to stop him. Let's go follow him for a minute and see if we see anything. See if he tries to take anything. No kidding, dude. They repaved this. Nice. These dudes are killing it. What's happening up here today? The usual. A little bit of skating action. Let's see where we are on uh, range. 6.8 miles into this ride. 45 minutes about. Still, well, what's it saying here on battery? Five, six, seven, eight bars. Probably out of 10. Seems about right. Dude, these people are crazy out here doing this stuff with no helmet. As a commuter, probably shouldn't be riding this down too many stairs. But I can do it. 
Just make sure you tighten down that stem thing. All right, let's go try some more hills and see how this holds up. So just keep in mind, you probably will get much better range than I'm gonna get today because I'm pretty much just using the throttle a lot. Hey, doggy. And another thing to note, if I didn't mention it already, is the torque sensor will really help you get a lot better range than a cadence sensor. The cadence sensors kind of tend to give you like jolts of power and it makes it for like a less smooth riding experience, but also a little more taxing on the battery. Another thing I wanted to mention is the throttle on this bike is actually like a lot better than a lot of the budget bikes I review. It just has like a more sturdy feel to it and it gives you like, gives you just a little bit better uh, feedback in terms of like putting down uh, power like in a predictable way. Some of them kind of work like on off switches. This one isn't not like an on off switch, but uh, better than some of them I've tried. Check it out. This bike is a hardtail. So it has suspension on the front, which will give you a little bit of cushioning from stuff like the boardwalk but if you really want the best suspension you could add yourself like a suspension seat post which only costs like 100 bucks or something i've tried it on other bikes uh makes for a pretty big difference now this bike obviously the tires just aren't going to be wide enough to really take out here on the beach today unfortunately sand rides always fun but you need four inch wide tires in order to really do this it's got power though but unfortunately those little tires they'll, they'll just sink in to the sand front suspension definitely gives us some cushion though on, on these bumps but <laughs> you can probably hear my voice let's just say it's a little bit more meant for riding out here it is a commuter bike after all Ooh, that is the creepiest thing gotta go back who this is the creepiest thing what what in the world who 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 jump down a few gears see how this performs it's on uh pedal assist five let's see throttle only so let's bring us up seven miles an hour 7.2 7.5 7.8 so it can uh eight miles an hour pull us up this hill under throttle only so again you know it's a, it's a decent climber for a 500 watt bike really that's because the uh battery on this bike is relatively big and it must have a pretty decent controller pulling a decent amount of amps to be able to do that let's get on up here to the california incline see how it does on that hill coming up here this bike can probably do a little bit of off-roading you know not through like the thickest sand but like you know stuff like this i wouldn't expect to do too much off-roading with this bike though really Let's see if we can get this ball it's pretty smooth on uh pedal assist three i feel like that's where the happy place is cruising along here giving it like a decent amount of effort put it on pedal assist five and it'll uh take over for you yeah you really don't have to do too much work on pedal assist five it'll It'll just do it for you, <laughs> which is cool. All right, let's take it up the California incline. Bump it down a couple gears here and probably leave it on Palisades 5. Let's do throttle only though. Let's see if we can do this on throttle only. Yeah, it's, oh no, we got to watch out for the surfboard. Starting from a stop though, it's throttling us up the loop-de-loop. -loop. Again, another case for the mock wheel asphalt doing well out here on the asphalt going up hills what about the main section here so it's an 85 foot elevation gain if it's your first time here over uh 12 grade and as you can see we're, we're about to pass the acoustic bike throttle only which is going to cut us off at 20 miles an hour 17 18 19 19.5 so it achieved uh about 19 miles an hour <laughs> on its own now it's not the steepest hill around but we did just start all the way down there and what do you know another freaking beautiful day here you see malibu out there come over this way you can see the the pier let's see how fast we can go down the california incline before we test the brakes so if you press the throttle it'll uh, cut you off on power regardless of whether you're pedaling or not and then it kind of cuts you off once you hit about 29 30. brakes feel great i mean they're hydraulic tektro disc brakes 180 millimeter rotors can't really ask for much more on a commuter style bike of this weight i mean these are excellent all right dudes final thoughts on the mock wheel asphalt i mean if you're in the market for a commuter style electric bike i really don't see where you can go wrong with this one i mean it's 1600 bucks at the time of this recording it's got a torque sensor it's got a pretty much 15 amp hour battery pack pretty strong hill climber very smooth riding experience comfortable riding position with these swept back handlebars integrated rear lights it's not the cheapest commuter style electric bike i've reviewed definitely not the most expensive commuter style electric bike i've reviewed either so for 1600 bucks you know i, I think 
the value is there. The hydraulic brakes are good. And if you do want to grab one of these, you can click the link below this video in the description box, buy through that link, and it would help support my reviews here at Tail Happy TV. Of course, I know this bike isn't for everybody, but let's head on home, see what the final range is on the mock wheel. Uh, if you're gonna be riding on the boardwalk, I would add a suspension seat post if I were you. Just get a brake test in from 20. These people are gonna be scared. Yeah. These hydraulic brakes are butter. I mean, they're hydraulic, 180 millimeter rotors, so they're smooth. That's the kind of tires you need to ride out there. What is that? Let's see if I can see the light in here. Oh yeah, you can, you can see it. Even in broad daylight. It's a party out here at the beach today, man. Oh, I know, it's always like that. Yeah, I know, right? On, on a weekend, especially right there. They don't even give a Let's see if we can get through a little bit of sand here. Not too bad. Probably wait before I hop out here and just cross traffic like everybody else does around here. And we'll be on our way. It does have the brake cutoff sensor, so you can just cut out the motor at any time if you want to. This dog is living the life. You know those are e-bikes because we're going 28. And according to GPS, that is accurate. So after an hour and 54 minutes of riding and 19 miles on the asphalt, I've got to say the torque sensor feels most natural and good on pedal assist three. It's when I get the best feedback. And as far as our range goes, it's showing four out of 10 bars so about 40 percent remaining on the battery roughly after 19 miles so you know they claim you can get 60 miles i could definitely see you getting 60 miles especially if you're helping it out based on the way i was riding today i'd probably end up getting about 40 miles on this bike so overall for about 1600 bucks i think this bike does justify the value if you want to grab one click the link below this video buy through that link it would help support my reviews on this channel however if this is not the kind of bike you're looking for, you can watch this video next. Thanks for watching guys. Catch you in my next one. So it's showing 48.2 volts, which uh, that's actually like 50% charge.